Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. First, we will learn about the basic valvetrain systems. OHV stands for overhead valve. The camshaft is located at the lower side of the engine and it transfers the cam's motion to the top of the engine using pushrods. The pushrods open and close the intake and exhaust valves via the rocker arms. One advantage is the low center of gravity of the engine, but the inertia and flexing of the pushrods make it unsuitable for high revving engines. As a result, it is not used in modern passenger cars. As an exception, the Chevrolet Corvette uses an OHV engine but this is believed to be for maintaining its identity, rather than for performance reasons. OHC stands for Overhead Camshaft. The rotation of the crankshaft is transmitted to a single camshaft at the top of the engine, using a timing chain or timing belt. It allows for higher engine speed compared to OHV, but it is taller and has higher center of gravity than OHV. The two valve type, with one intake and one exhaust valve per cylinder, is common. But there have also been OHC engines with three valves or four valves per cylinder. They were commonly used until the 1980s to 1990s. DOHC stands for double overhead camshaft. It features one camshaft for intake and one for exhaust. The four valve type, with two valves for intake and two for exhaust, is common but there have also been five valve designs with three intake valves. Having more valves allows for greater air intake volume, enabling higher output than OHC. Today, most passenger cars adopt OHC engine. As we have seen so far, in traditional valvetrain systems, the timing of the opening and closing of the intake and exhaust valves, as well as the amount the valves open, are fixed. However, this can cause problems. Air has weight and is subject to inertia. Still air cannot start moving suddenly, and moving air cannot stop abruptly. If the intake valve closes when the piston is fully down, the intake valve will block the air moving within the intake port. Therefore, the intake valve is designed to close after the piston is at its lowest position. This increases the efficiency of the suction. If the valve timing is designed to match high engine speeds, the intake air will flow back into the intake port at low speeds, reducing the filling efficiency. If it is designed to match low engine speeds, the opposite will occur. Additionally, the valve lift amount is also a trade-off. When the valve lift is small, the intake air velocity is high at low engine speeds, allowing the engine to intake sufficient air. However, at high engine speeds, the narrow air passage cannot allow a sufficient amount of air to flow. With a large valve lift, the engine can intake sufficient air at high engine speeds. But at low engine speeds, the air velocity decreases, and the engine cannot intake a sufficient amount of air. Variable valvetrain systems solve these issues by allowing adjustment of valve timing and lift amounts. There are mainly three types of variable valve train systems. The type that only changes the valve opening and closing timing. The type that switches cams to change both the valve timing and valve lift amount. And the type that moves the fulcrum of the rocker arm to change both the valve timing and valve lift amount. The variable valve timing system changes the valve opening and closing timing by altering the phase between the camshaft sprocket and the camshaft. Currently, the left and right camshafts are in a retarded position. Rotating the right camshaft clockwise relative to the cam sprocket will cause the valves to open and close earlier. You can see that the valve opening and closing timings are different. The helical gear type has a camshaft with spline grooves and a helical gear that is spline engaged to it. The helical gear can slide in the axial direction of the camshaft. Additionally, it rotates together with the camshaft. 
the camshaft sprocket is integrated with a cylinder that has gear teeth on its inner circumference. Under normal operation, the camshaft sprocket and the camshaft rotate as a single unit. When hydraulic pressure is applied to the helical gear, it moves in the axial direction and rotates. The camshaft, which is spline engaged with the helical gear, also rotates together with the helical gear. As a result, the phase between the camshaft sprocket and the camshaft is changed, altering the valve timing. You can see that the valve opening and closing timings are different. This system controls only two stages, advance and retard. The vane type has a vane rotor integrated with the camshaft. The camshaft sprocket is integrated with the hydraulic cylinder. The vane rotor can rotate within the cylinder. Currently, hydraulic pressure is applied to hydraulic chamber number 1, pushing the vane rotor in a counterclockwise direction. When the hydraulic pressure is released from hydraulic chamber number 1 and applied to hydraulic chamber number 2, the vane rotor rotates clockwise. As a result, the phase between the camshaft sprocket and the camshaft is changed, altering the valve timing. You can see that the valve opening and closing timings are different. This system can continuously adjust the valve timing. To achieve quicker response operation, electric variable valve timing systems are developed. There are various types, such as electric motor types and electromagnetic clutch types. This video introduces an electric motor type. The camshaft and the camshaft cam ring rotate together as a single unit. The camshaft cam ring meshes with gear B. The camshaft sprocket and the camshaft sprocket cam ring rotate together as a single unit. The camshaft sprocket cam ring meshes with gear A. Gears A and B are integrated and are eccentrically rotated by an electric motor. While holding the valve timing, the electric motor rotates gears A and B at the same speed as the camshaft sprocket, causing the camshaft to rotate at the same speed. During advance action, the electric motor rotates the gears faster than the camshaft sprocket, thereby changing the phase between the camshaft and the camshaft sprocket. So, it is quite difficult to understand. We will learn about the operating principles. When the electric motor rotates the gears at the same speed as the camshaft sprocket, the camshaft also rotates at the same speed. When the electric motor rotates the gears faster, it is observed that the camshaft leads the camshaft sprocket. The cam switching system is a system that switches between two or three cams to change both the valve timing and valve lift amount. The Honda VTEC has two low speed cams and one high speed cam, and it also includes a lock pins within the rocker arm that are operated by engine oil pressure. At low engine speeds, the lock pins are not activated, and the valves are pressed down by the low-speed cams and low-speed rocker arms, while the high-speed cam and high-speed rocker arm idle. When the engine speed reaches the specified value, the engine oil pressure moves the lock pins, locking the low-speed rocker arm and the high-speed rocker arm together. The high-speed cam presses down the valve through the high-speed rocker arm and the low-speed rocker arms that are locked to the high-speed rocker arm. At this time, the low speed cams idle. Comparing low and high engine speeds, you can see that both the timing of valve opening and closing and the valve lift amount are different. The Porsche Vario Cam Plus is a system that has a cam switching mechanism inside the tappet. This system includes two high speed cams and one low speed cam. A low-speed tappet is placed inside a high-speed tappet, and the tappets are equipped with a lock pin that operates using engine oil pressure. At low engine speeds, the lock pin is not engaged. The valve is pushed down by the low-speed cam and low-speed tappet, while the high-speed cams and high-speed tappet idle. When the engine speed reaches the specified value, the engine oil pressure moves the lock pin, locking the low-speed tappet and the high-speed tappet together. 
The high-speed cam pushes the valve down, through the high-speed tappet and the low-speed tappet, which is locked to the high-speed tappet. At this time, the low-speed cam's idle. Comparing low and high engine speeds. You can see that both the timing of valve opening and closing, and the valve lift amount, are different. The Audi AVS is a system that switches cams by moving the camshaft in its axial direction. The camshaft is spline engaged to the cam sprocket shaft, allowing it to move axially and rotating together with the cam sprocket shaft. At low engine speeds, the low speed cam pushes the valve down via the rocker arm. When the engine speed reaches the specified value, the electric actuator inserts the control pin into the helical groove of the camshaft. The camshaft moves axially while rotating, causing the high-speed cam to push down the rocker arm. The BMW Valvetronic is a system that changes both the valve timing and valve lift by moving the fulcrum of the intermediate lever. At low engine speeds, the intermediate lever pushes down the rocker arm only slightly, resulting in a small valve opening. At high engine speeds, the electric motor rotates the intermediate cam to move the fulcrum of the intermediate lever, thereby increasing the valve lift. Comparing low and high engine speeds, you can see that both the timing of valve opening and closing, and the valve lift amount, are different. Mitsubishi MyVec changes both the valve timing and valve lift amount by rotating the control shaft, which alters the fulcrum of the center rocker arm. At low engine speeds, the center rocker arm pushes up the swing cam only slightly, resulting in a smaller valve lift. At high engine speeds, the control shaft moves the fulcrum of the center rocker arm, increasing the valve lift and retarded valve timing. Comparing low and high engine speeds, you can see that both the timing of valve opening and closing, and the valve lift amount, are different. Fiat Multi-Air is a highly unique system that drives the intake valves using hydraulic pressure generated by the exhaust camshaft. When the control valve is closed, all the hydraulic pressure generated by the plunger is applied to the intake valve, resulting in a large valve lift and keeping the valve open for a longer duration. If the control valve is open while the intake valve is partially open, the hydraulic pressure will be released, causing the intake valve to open with a smaller lift and for a shorter duration. Comparing low and high engine speeds, you can see that both the timing of valve opening and closing, and the valve lift amount, are different. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video.